This lecture is on personality dis disorders. Every one of these disorders has a YouTube video posted for you in a folder in Blackboard. So you can either go and look at them all now, look at them all after the lecture, or you can pause the lecture as we're going through and look at them as they uh, apply to what we're talking about. So personality is a distinctive set of traits, behavior styles, and patterns that make up our character or individuality. How we perceive the world, our attitudes, thoughts, and feelings are part of our personality. <coughs> Excuse me. Normal personality is the ability to cope with normal stressors and have no problems forming relationships with family, friends, or coworkers. Individuals who meet criteria for personality disorders exhibit consistent difficulty in three areas of day-to-day -day functioning. They include thoughts and emotions, participation in interpersonal relationships like trusting and forming bonds, and managing impulses. These areas of difficulty create significant problems in living and disrupt the quality of life for the person and their family and friends. Personality disorders are quite common. Research shows that approximately 1 in 10 people meets the criteria for a personality disorder. Most people who have PD, which is personality disorder, also struggle with mood, anxiety, and eating disorders, as well as substance abuse. Most patients who have a personality disorder often display traits of another personality disorder as well, and they can be diagnosed with more than one. Some common characteristics. They are unable to respond to changes and demands of life. This occurs in a cycle. Inflexible and maladaptive response to stress. Disability in working and loving. Ability to evoke interpersonal conflict. And capacity to get under the skin of others. Persistent patterns of thought, emotion, and behavior are not experienced as uncomfortable or disorganized by the individual. In fact, they feel their behavior pattern is normal or it's right. They have a difficult time dealing with other people and they lack insight. All of them have self-esteem issues with a difficult time participating in social events. The goals of nursing care is to provide professional care and not be their friend. They are difficult to treat because personality is resistant to change. There are no medications, unfortunately, that help with personality disorders. Genetics are thought to influence the development of personality disorders, but individual genes are not believed to be associated with particular personality traits. Size and function of structures in the brain are different in those with personality disorders. Neurotransmitter activity and availability may also play an impact on personality disorders. Children learn maladaptive behaviors like modeling and reinforcement within their environment. There may be harsh discipline, neglect, and trauma, and possibly overprotective parents. Some common defense mechanisms. Repression is temporary or long-term forgetting of unpleasant or unwanted experiences, emotions, or ideas from a conscious awareness. An example is after fighting with her husband, a patient forgets to pick up his dry cleaning. Suppression is the conscious denial of a disturbing situation or feeling. An example is if a teen does not get her period after having unprotected sex, she consciously denies being pregnant and does not seek medical attention. Undoing is when a person makes up for an act or a communication. An example is after flirting with another man, the wife buys her husband a gift to make up for her wrongdoing and to make herself feel better. Splitting is when one person is labeled good and another is labeled bad. When the good person has not met the patient's needs, then that person becomes bad. Someone else is then labeled good while the others are still bad. An example is a new patient may take a fond liking to you and talk you up to other staff members or other patients, but the minute you disappoint them or frustrate them, they quickly shift to devaluation and despise you. And then projection is when the patient blames others for their shortcomings. 
Assessments will include medical history, which is going to help determine if the problem is a psychiatric one, a medical one, or both. Assessment also includes psychosocial history, like past physical, sexual, or emotional abuse, risk for harm at times, immediate interventions may be needed to ensure the safety of the patient or others, and medications. They may be a good indicator if the patient was or is on psychopharmacological agents and may also lead to another medical um, contact as well. So let's first talk about cluster A personality disorders. They're usually, you, you will usually see eccentric and odd behaviors like social isolation and detachment. And typically present in the early adulthood, these individuals are severely ill and can be resistant to treatment. They're often seen in the acute care setting and may require case management when their impairments interfere with their day-to-day -day functioning. And they can develop fairly suddenly in individuals who are once normal, and then they progress with time. So the first is paranoid personality disorder. They are secretive, emotionally cold, and excessively serious. These patients believe and suspect that others want to exploit, harm, or deceive them without significant proof of that being done. They doubt the loyalty or trustworthiness of friends or associates and the fidelity of a spouse or partner. They read hidden demeaning or threatening meaning into benign remarks or events. They demonstrate jealousy, controlling behaviors, and unwillingness to forgive. They certainly hold grudges. It's difficult to interview them, and they don't confide in others because they're reluctant to share information about themselves. They're often anxious about being harmed. These individuals interpret the actions of others as deliberately threatening or demeaning. They're prone to angry or aggressive outbursts because they perceive others as unfaithful or deceitful. Their defense mechanism is projection. So an example is a client at a healthcare center who may think the security cameras are the government watching them while they're there. With communion, communication, you want to avoid ambiguity. You have to give clear and straightforward explanations on tests and procedures before doing them. You have to warn about any changes, side effects, or medications and reasons for the delays and project a neutral but kind affect. Therapies can include psychotherapy, group therapy, and antidepressants. Schizoid personality disorder. The primary feature is emotional detachment. They have few close friends other than first degree relatives, and these individuals do not seek out or enjoy close relationships. They're loners, introverted, withdrawn, solitary, and distant. They lack ability for emotional involvement. They're emotionally cold. They have detachment, flattened affect, and they try to avoid eye contact or contact with people altogether. They are followers rather than leaders. They choose solitary activities and take pleasure in few activities. They try and choose jobs with little social interaction. And they display behaviors lacking social tact or grace in a group. This may be a precursor to schizophrenia or delusional disorders. There's a higher chance if the family has a history of schizophrenia or schizotypical personality disorder. The treatments are antidepressants, um, especially bupropion or Welbutrin. Second to generation antipsychotics like risperidone or risperdal, or olanzapine, which is also called Cyprexa, and psychotherapy. So at examples of schizoid personality disorder are Charles Darwin and Bill Gates. So let's talk about schizotypal, typical personality disorder. They have odd characteristics such as magical thinking, derealization, perceptual distortions, and rigid peculiar ideas. They have strange, outlandish, or paranoid beliefs and thoughts. An example is believing in telepathy or the sixth sense. They are overly suspicious and anxious. They're aloof and detached. They have, may have bizarre or mystical beliefs, which would suggest schizophrenia. They have ideas of reference, like giving personal significance to trivial events, or perceiving events as related to, to them when they are not. 
such as when an RN is talking, they feel that it may be a plot against them. Speech patterns may be distinctive and bizarre. Conversations tend to ramble with lengthy, unclear, overly detailed, and abstract content. They're vague, circumstantial, metaphorical, over-elaborate, or stereotyped. They have difficulty forming relationships and experience extreme anxiety in social situations. They have a lack of close friends or confidence other than first degree relatives. They have excessive social anxiety and paranoid fears rather than negative judgments about themselves. And people with schizophrenia are more likely to exhibit traits of schizotypal personality disorders. Treatments include antipsychotics like risperidol and zyprexa, antidepressants, psychotherapy, cognitive and behavior therapy, and family and group therapy. An example is Willy Wonka. All right, now let's jump into cluster B personality disorders. In these, you will see dramatic emotional or erratic behaviors, typically present in early adulthood. Persons often show problems with impulse control, emotional processing and regulation, and interpersonal difficulties. To get their needs met, these individuals may resort to behaviors that are desperate or entitled, including acting out, antisocial acts, or manipulating people and circumstances. Persons with these type of personality disorders come into contact with healthcare providers, both directly with depression, substance abuse, self-harm, or suicide, or indirectly with acting out that leads to interaction with the legal system. So the first is antisocial personality disorder. There's a failure to conform to social norms and laws. They tend to act out their conflicts and ignore normal rules of social behavior. They can be deceitful, impulsive, or have a failure to plan ahead, and irresponsible. They have irritability and aggression. They may have physical fights or assaults. Individuals often show no remorse for hurting others in absence of anxiety or guilt feelings. They may neglect responsibilities, tell lies, and perform destructive or illegal acts without developing any insight into predictable consequences. There may be failure to sustain consistent work behavior or honor financial obligations. They accept no responsibility, may have a history of substance abuse, but do not change with any punishment for these. They might have many legal problems, like for theft and vandalism, and the risk for ETOH and substance abuse is quite high. So uh, you need to set clear and realistic limits on specific behavior with people with antisocial personality disorders. Ensure that all staff are following these limits. You have to document signs of manipulation and aggression and provide clear boundaries and consequences. Antisocial patients can instill guilt when they do not get what they want. Be sure to guard against being manipulated through feelings of guilt. Encourage the patient to attend treatment programs for substance abuse. Therapies can include psychotherapy, medications for anxiety, rage, and depression, careful, to use, um, careful use of addictive agents like benzos. They might um, be harmful for these patients. And there's a question if anticonvulsants may help that impulsive behavior. An example, a couple examples for people with antisocial personality disorders are Hitler and Charlie Sheen. So borderline personality disorders. You will see repeating patterns of instability with interpersonal relationships, self-image, and affects. Their mood is very unstable and reactive. They might have wild mood swings. Intense episodes of low mood, irritability, or anxiety. Their baseline mood is low and interrupted with episodes of anger, panic, or despair. They rarely, rarely have periods of well-being or satisfaction. They may have impulsive behavior and risky behavior like spending money, a lot of sex, a lot of substance abuse, reckless driving, and gambling. They're unpredictable. They may have chronic feelings of empty emptiness and they are manipulative. They might have splitting behaviors, like the world is in extremes, all good or all bad. The inability to incorporate positive and negative aspects of themselves or others into a whole image. 
An example of this is a person with borderline personality disorder may idolize a person at the beginning of a relationship, but with the first disappointment or frustration, the individual quickly shifts to devaluation, despising the other person. They are self-destructive. They may have recurrent suicidal behavior, gestures or threats, or self-mutilating mutilating behavior. They may have separation anxiety, excessive dependency, they do not like being alone, and their insecure sense of self. They have ideas of reference. They can experience transient episodes of paranoia or depersonalization. And the disorder gradually gets better with age. Early adulthood is marked with the most intense and typically includes suicide. They have harmful self-soothing habits like cutting, promiscuous sexual behaviors, and substance abuse. An example of a borderline personality disorder is Jeffrey Dahmer. So you have to set clear and consistent boundaries and limits. Clear and straightforward communication should be used. Be aware of manipulative behaviors again like flattery, seductiveness, and instilling guilt. Avoid rejecting or rescuing. And assess for suicidal and self-mutilating behaviors, especially during times of stress. Therapies may include individual psychotherapy, group therapy, antipsychotics to control the anger and brief psychosis, antidepressants like SSRIs or MAOIs, and benzodiazepines to help anxiety. Narcissistic personality disorder, you will see exaggerated self-importance. Their characteristics include grandiose views of self-importance, exaggerate achievements and talents, and they expect to be recognized as superior without any achievement at all. They're preoccupied with fantasies of unlimited success, power, brilliance, beauty, or love. They lack empathy, so they're unwilling to recognize or identify with the feelings and needs of others. And they're envious of others or believe that others are envious of them. They remain neutral and avoid engaging in power struggles or becoming defensive. Therapies include psychotherapy after the patient acknowledges the narcissism, group therapy to work on empathy, lithium for the mood swings, and antidepressants. An example of a narcissistic personality disorder is Charles Manson. Histrionic personality disorder, you're going to see a long-standing pattern of attention-seeking and extreme emotions. They need to be the center of attention. They're uncomfortable in situations where this does not occur. There's rapidly shifting and shallow expression of emotions. They use physical appearance to draw attention to themselves. It's often inappropriate and provocative behavior. And relationships do not last long because the partner often feels smothered or reacts to the insensitivity of the histri histrionic person, or moves on for a more exciting relationship. You have to understand that the seductive behavior is a response to their distress. Keep communication and interactions professional. Encourage and model the use of concrete and descriptive rather than vague and impressionistic language. Teach and role model assertiveness and show by example. You need to, they need to know boundaries. Um, you may need to include some close-ended questions and redirection. Ignoring the patient will only escalate their behavior. Allowing the behavior will be maladaptive to the group. And reprimanding bad behavior may lead to lack of involvement. Therapies include group therapy, treating, treating comorbid personality disorders, and antidepressants as needed. So some examples of histrionic personality disorder are Austin Powers, Paris Hilton, and the Kardashians. All right, cluster C personality disorders. These people are anxious and fearful. They often display social shyness, hypersensitivity, need for orderliness, and relationship dependency. Persons with these types of personality disorders often come into psychiatric care for treatment of anxiety related to fear of relationships or the loss of a relationship. So the four, first is avoidant personality disorder. Characteristics include hypersensitive to rejection and unwilling to become involved with others unless they are sure to be liked. 
and they want re close relationships, but they fear rejection. It's very important. They have low self-esteem. They view themselves as socially inept, personally unappealing, or inferior. And they have excessive social discomfort. They're timid, and they fear criticism. They have poor self-confidence, reluctant to take personal risks or to engage in new activities because they may be embarrassed. They are prone to misinterpreting others' feedback because they're overly sensitive to rejection. And they become very hurt by disapproval. They may be part of a continuum of disorders related to social anxiety disorder as well. They're probably friendly, accepting, and you have to take, uh, you should be friendly, I'm sorry, accepting, and take a reassuring approach, because um, this is the best way to treat these patients. Do not push them into social situations as it may cause extreme and severe anxiety. Therapies may include promoting self-esteem, psychotherapy focuses on trust, group therapy, and antidepressants and anti-anxiety medications. Example of these people, um, is Jodie Foster in NIMS Island. Dependent personality disorder. Characteristics include submissive and self-sacrificing. Passive, the rare, they rarely initiate projects or do things independently. Self-doubting and self, um, laugh, lack of self-confidence. Low self-esteem and they fear rejection. They rely on others to make decisions for them. They're easily hurt by criticism and they're uncomfortable if they're alone or if a relationship ends. You should identify and help address current stressors and acknowledge the situation while encouraging independence. And that's very important for these people to acknowledge the situation but encourage independence. You have to set up limits with the patient so they don't feel pushed, um, punished and withdrawn from the situation. You have to be aware of counter-transference because of excessive clinging. Um, this demands extra time and um, you also have to teach and be a role model with assertiveness and require excessive reassurance and ad advice. Therapies might include therapy related to behavior and assertiveness training, family and group therapies, and anti-anxiety agents and antidepressants. Now, obsessive compulsive personality disorder. Characteristics include perfectionism, interferes with the task completion. They're focused on orderly things when things are need to be done in a particular way. They increase stands for themselves and others. They never are never satisfied with their achievements. Excessively devoted to work and often negotiate leisure activities and friendships. They take on more and more responsibility and they're reluctant to delegate tasks or work with others unless it's um, their way of doing it. They may feel genuinely affect, genuine affection for friends and family, but they don't have insight about their own difficult behavior and how this affects them. They're reliable, dependable, orderly, and methodical, but their inflexibility mirrors them incapable of adapting to change. They're unable to discard worn out or worthless objects even if there's no sentimental value and they may hoard money for future catastrophes. So this differs from uh, the typical obsessive compulsive disorder because um, obsessive compulsive personality disorders have less frequency and less intensity with these following behaviors. Hoarding, perfectionism, and preoccupation with details. They don't think there's anything wrong they feel they have a certain level of perfect or excellence, but they demand this from everyone else, and that's why they have difficulties with others. With normal obsessive compulsive behavior um, disorders, the, they're mostly personal distress, and they don't inflict this on others, and they also know that something's wrong, but they just can't help doing what they do. So you have to guard against power struggles. The patient needs, um, the patient's need for control is high. There's intellectualization, rationalization, reaction formation, isolation, and undergoing are the most common defense mechanisms that they use. 
Therapies may include supportive therapy and SSRIs for the obsessive thinking and depression. So the effects of personality disorders include, um, and this is both for staff that are caring for the patient and for the family members as well. Um, Self-analyze what makes your buttons get pushed because awareness and monitoring of your own stress re responses to patient behaviors will facilitate more effective and therapeutic intervention, regardless of the specific approach to their care. Remember that it can be normal to have these feelings. The important thing is to recognize the signs and symptoms within yourself and take a break. Never take out your feelings on the patient or their family members and be supportive to the family members as they experience this patient every day. The primary goal is management of the patient's affect in a group context. Community meetings, coping skills groups, and socializing groups are beneficial. This allows interaction between peers and staff to discuss goals and learn problem-solving skills. Patients take more responsibility for themselves if they're actively involved in the treatment plan. People with borderline personality are or can be impulsive, aggressive, manipulative, and even psychotic during periods of stress. It's important to stay abreast of the behavior so that you or the other staff members don't get manipulated. And lastly, how to handle a manipulation. All concerns of this must go to the primary nurse for that patient. Manipulative patients frequently make requests of many different staff members, hoping that one of them will give in. Having one decision maker per patient provides consistency and avoids the potential for playing one staff member against another. Identify undesirable patient behavior with the uh, patient if appropriate. Discuss concerns with the patient if appropriate. And discuss what desirable behavior is in a given situation or setting if appropriate. Refrain from arguing or bargaining with the patient about established behavior expectations and consequences. And monitor the patient for occurrence or non-occurrence of desired behaviors. And that's it for this lecture today.